Hello, my name is Ken. And my name is Jason. And today we're reviewing... Ghost, Ghost Stories. Stories. Stories was originally published in 2008 by Repost Production, uh, so it's actually a relatively recent game. In Ghost Stories, the game board actually depicts a town which happens to host the uh, funerary ashes of Wu Feng, the Lord of Hell. There are ghosts uh, constantly trying to invade the town. If they actually manage to get a hold of uh, Wu Feng's ashes, he will be uh, restored and the entire world of the living will be destroyed. <laughs> and players actually take the role of Taoist monks who uh, are trying to protect the town and obviously to uh, prevent Wu Feng from getting his ashes. Alright, so let's talk about ghost stories. So now we're going to go over the components of ghost stories. These are the village tiles. These are the player boards. These are the Tao dice and the cursed die. These are the ghost cards and the incarnation cards. These are some of the cardboard tokens that come with the game. So these are Chi tokens, Yin Yang tokens, Dao tokens, neutral power tokens, and inactive power tokens. And finally, these are the figurines that come with the game. These are the Dao figures, the Haunter figures, and the Buddha figures. In setup, First, you randomly arrange the village tiles. Next, place the player boards around the tiles, one on each side. Then players are given the requisite tokens. So in this case, I'm setting up for a two-player game, which means that each player gets a power token. In addition, each player gets the yin-yang token of their color, a Dao token of their color, plus a black Dao token, and their Taoist figurine. The Buddha figurines are then placed on the temple. And finally, the ghost deck is prepared. To prepare the ghost deck, first the ghost cards are shuffled. Next, you may have to remove some ghost cards depending on the number of players. In this case, I'll have to remove 10 because we're playing with two players. 10 cards are then dealt from the top of the ghost deck. A random incarnation card is selected and placed on top of these cards. And finally, the remaining ghost cards are placed on top of this card. As a final note, if you're playing on higher difficulty, you may actually be inserting more incarnations into the deck. We're just using one here though because we're playing at the initiation level. Each actual player is given five chi tokens, and each neutral board is given three chi tokens. And then the dice are placed next to the board. And now you're ready to play. So each player's turn is split into two phases, the yin phase and the yang phase. During the yin phase, the ghosts get to do things, uh, and during the yang phase, the player actually gets to do things. So the yin phase is split up into four parts. First of all, if there are any haunters on your player board, they move forward one space. Next, if there are any ghosts with the tormentor symbol, shown here, then you have to roll the cursed die and apply the effect. If there happen to be three ghosts already on your board, then you have to lose one chi. And finally, if you did not take damage during the last step, then a ghost arrives, meaning you have to flip over the top card from the ghost deck and place it on the appropriate board. At the start of the yin phase, you may have some haunters on your player board, which are the ones that actually have the figurine. Uh, in the event that you do, then you simply move those figures one space forward. In the event that they reach the final space, the third space, then the tile directly in front of them is flipped over and the tile becomes haunted. If the tile is already haunted, then it goes on to the next tile, and so on. If any ghosts have the Tormentor icon shown here, the player must roll the Cursed Die and apply the effect immediately. So the Cursed Die has two blank sides, in which case nothing happens. It also has four sides that do various bad things to the player. This side makes you lose one chi. This side automatically haunts one tile. This side makes you draw another ghost card. 
and this side makes you lose all of your DAO tokens. As previously mentioned, if your entire board is filled, if all three spaces are filled, then you lose one chi immediately, and this may kill you. After that, if you have not taken any damage because of that, you draw the next ghost card and you place it on the appropriate player board. If it's a colored card, so blue, green, red, or yellow, it's placed on that colored board. If it's a black ghost card, then it's placed on your player board. During the Yang phase, first of all, the player may optionally move one space, so they can move to any adjacent space, meaning in the center, they can move to any tile, but when they're on the edges, they can only move one tile away, and diagonals are allowed. Next, the player may take an action, meaning they can either activate the power of the village tile they are on, or they may attempt to exercise a ghost that they are next to. And then at the end of the turn, if the player happens to have a Buddha figurine, they may place that Buddha figurine on any empty ghost space. During the Yang phase, a player may choose to either use the village tile that he's on, or he may attempt an exorcism against a ghost which is adjacent to him. And finally, if that player has a Buddha figurine, he may place it on an empty ghost space next to him. At any point during a player's Yang phase, they may also choose to use a power token if they have one. If they use a power token, this allows them to use the ability of either of the neutral player boards. So they would simply expend the token, use the power immediately, and then the token is placed in the center space. At the end of anyone's turn, if they are in the center space, they can pick up all of the neutral power tokens that are there. The yin yang tokens can also be used at any time during a player's turn, and they allow the player to either use any village tile immediately, even if they are not there, or unhaunt any village tile which is currently haunted. Each village tile actually has icons at the bottom showing exactly what it does. These are all explained on the reference sheet that comes with the game, but I'll go over a few of them here just to give you an idea. So this is the circle of power space. When you go here, you may choose any one DAO token that you have and place it on the space here. This lowers all ghosts resistance by that color. This is the cemetery. If any of the players have happened to die, another player can actually go here and resurrect them they come back with two chi, however the player who resurrected them has to roll the curse die. When a player is next to a ghost space, they may choose to attempt an exorcism. If they happen to be at a corner space, they may actually choose to attempt two exorcisms, one on each of the ghosts adjacent to them. To exorcise a ghost, first the player rolls all of the Dao dice. If the die roll shows enough of the color of the ghost, to actually overcome the resistance, which is shown here, then that ghost is exercised immediately. If the player does not have enough icons with the dice, they may choose to discard DAO tokens of that color to make up the difference. In addition, if there happens to be another Taoist in the same space, they may share tokens. If the player is attempting two exorcisms at a corner space, they may, must actually get enough symbols to overcome both ghosts' resistance to defeat them. In other words, if they're facing a ghost with three red resistance and another with two red, they have to receive a total of 5 red to exercise both ghosts. And when a ghost is exercised, the player immediately executes its right stone ability, which is shown here. And this is usually either a reward or a curse.
Each Taoist also has a special ability. Each color has two possible abilities, and you randomly select one side of the board for each game. So this will change each game as well. As an example, on the side shown here, the red monk may move anywhere on the board, regardless of where they actually happen to be. So you may actually move all the way to the other side of the board if you wish. This power of the green monk actually allows you to re-roll any one die when you have to roll dice. So you may re-roll one Dao die, or you may re-roll the Cursed Eye. So when playing with less than four players, as I previously touched on, the remaining boards are actually still set up, but they are considered to be neutral boards. They each have three Chi, which can be taken as damage through uh, Cursed Dice and other things like that. And they still get a turn in the turn order. The only thing that happens during their turn, however, is Haunter movement and Tormentor roll rolls. And if a neutral board loses all of its chi, then its power is no longer available for the remainder of the game. So as far as ending the game, the players lose immediately when either all monks are dead, any three village tiles are haunted, or if they need to draw a ghost card and there are none left. <laughs> the players win only if they have defeated all incarnations of Wu Fang in the deck. Alright, so we're at the start of the game now, so uh, I am going to be going first. Uh, the first thing that I technically have to do is execute any ghost actions, although there aren't any right, right now because I don't have any ghosts on my board. I also don't have to take damage. However, I do have to draw a ghost card now. So the top card actually happens to be a blue card, so that goes onto my, my player board because I am the blue player. Next, I get to take actions if I wish. So first of all, I'm going to move to this space, and then I'm going to attempt to exercise the ghost here. So first I roll all three dice, and unfortunately I haven't gotten any blue results at all, so I'm unable to exercise the ghost this turn. So next, technically it's the, the green board's turn, uh, however there aren't any ghosts presently on it, so nothing actually happens at this point. And then it is Kenny's turn. Okay, so since there's currently nothing on my board, uh, because this is just the first turn, um, I am just flipping over a new ghost. So, it just so happens that it ends up being a red ghost. And now my movement phase. I'm going to move to this space. Okay, my action is to exercise this ghost, however, I will note that he has an icon that makes him immune to dice rolling. Uh, so in order to exercise him, I'm just have, going to have to discard a Dao token. So next, technically the yellow board has a turn, but again, nothing happens because there's nothing on that board yet. And then it's back to my turn. Alright, so we're a few more turns in, uh, and as you can see, things are getting kind of dire. Uh, it's the start of my turn, so uh, first of all, I actually still don't have many ghosts on my board, uh, so nothing really happens to me at this point. I do have to draw an additional ghost, however. So I actually happen to draw a blue ghost, and uh, he goes onto my board, since I'm a blue player. He is the Haunter icon, so uh, Haunter figure is placed on the card. So next, I can move if I wish to. I actually don't in this case, so I'm going to stay where I am. And first of all, I'm actually going to use my ability, which is to use a village tile and I try to exercise a ghost in the same action. So first of all, I'm going to use the village tile I'm on, which is the Sorcerer's Hut. I lose one chi, however, I can instantly exercise any ghost on the board. In order to make things a little bit easier for Kenny, I'm actually going to exercise one of the ghosts on his board. Oh, this one God. here. Next, I can attempt to exercise a ghost. So I am going to try to exercise the ghost next to me. So first I roll three Dao Dice. Now I've gotten a white icon, which is actually a wild card, meaning that can be used as a green icon. In addition, we have a green Dao token on the circle of power, meaning that this ghost is reduced by one green icon. So I have actually exercised this ghost and it is discarded. 
that is the end of my turn. So next, the green player, or the green board in this case, has to go. So first of all, haunters are moved. moved. In this case, the circle of power is haunted and the uh, green token that was there is destroyed. And this ghost moves back to the card. And now it is Kenny's turn. Okay, so first Hunter moves. And then, since I am no longer overrun, I'm not going to take any damage. And then I have to reveal the ghost. So this is going to be a ghost in the green player board. Now in my Yang phase, uh, I can move, uh, but I choose not to because I'm where, I'm where I need to be. And I'm going to attempt to exercise. In my attempt to exercise, I could uh, exercise both of these ghosts at the same time. However, this one is immune to dice rolls, uh, therefore I can only actually attempt to exercise this guy. Making my roll. Uh, the results of my die are not uh, in my favor, however I have uh, a black DAO token that I can discard to exercise this ghost. Okay, and as a reward for exercising this ghost, I get one DAO token of uh, my choice uh, in color. And I'm going to choose to take green. So after my turn, it is then the yellow board's turn. First the haunter moves. Then the yellow board, because uh, all of its sections are filled up, takes one point of key. So the yellow board has been resolved, and now it's back to Jason's turn. So I actually think that uh, Ghost Stories is a great game. I really it's like great. it. Um, it's really easy to explain. So you know you, you don't have that uh, you know half hour when you have to constantly talk and tell people how to play play the game. Um, and in addition, I really love that, that they don't actually have any text on the cards or on the the tiles. Kudos to them for that for sure. Yeah, I, I mean it's it's very hard to do, but you know. Eventually, once you've learned how to play the game, you can just refer to the icons. You don't even need the reference sheet. And I just love an elegant design like that. Uh, I'm also a huge fan of the uh, the artwork uh, in this game. The artwork is fantastic. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm going to look up the name of the illustrator and uh, put him in the, the notes here because he is awesome. Very cool. I'm um, also a really big fan of the uh, the modeling they did. Um, the miniatures were really cool looking. Um, the tiles and stuff like that also uh, mm -hmm. have a good uh, good feel to them. And such well, it, it really feels coherent. Like it's you know it's visually pleasing and it it, it feels like it fits together really well. It does. It it really does fit together really well. And um, I think that uh, the only thing that kind of bugs me though is like don't get me wrong, wrong. I like challenging games because you know you play a challenging game and you if you beat it it feels so good because you're just like oh man I can't believe we did that. But uh, man, this game is really hard. It's it's. It's brutal. <laughs> well, it is, and you know, I, I, I've certainly given you know poorer scores on uh, other games because they were hard. But at the yeah. same time, at least this one is is really easy to explain. So you, yeah, you, you don't have to train people like you do in Space Alert. Uh, it's it's you know it's nice and simple, kind of like uh, you know Risk. <sighs> oh, that's not. <laughs> Please don't say the R word. <laughs> it's cool, Kenny. Yeah, it's okay. cool. Um. So uh, what would you give this game, Kenny? Uh, Ghost Stories. I would have to give Ghost Stories a 4 out of 5. Only really losing points just because of the difficulty level. Again, I'm not really uh, afraid of games that are hard, uh, but this one just seems like it's a little hard. Aside from that, though, great game. A lot of fun. I had a lot of fun playing it. What do you think, Jason? Uh, personally, I, I would give this actually 4.5 out of 5. That's um, fair. Uh, again, I, I, it loses points because of the difficulty, yeah. but at the same time, I think that this is so easy to explain that it kind of mitigates that and plus uh, like I said I just love the artwork and the quality of the pieces included in this so that's where I'm at. Good stuff. Well I mean that's going to give us a total of 8.5 meeples. So that's all for today and uh, join us next time for Vegas Showdown. See you later and have good games. <laughs>